There are four major chapters in the life story of Josephine Baker. Yet if she had experienced just one of these, her story would still be extraordinary. Her life genuinely has that you couldn't make it up quality. Josephine was present at so many pivotal moments of the 20th century. Her groundbreaking tale is recounted in an exhibition at her former home in the Dordogne, Le Chateau de Milan. In the 1920s she was the first black star of the Folie Berge Air nightclub in Paris. She was renowned for her revolutionary erotic danse sauvage, in her trademark skimpy banana skirt. On show at Le Chateau de Milan, it is considered one of the most celebrated historic items of clothing in show business. Dame Shirley Bassey has called Baker the main influence on her career, in all my life I have never seen such a spectacular singer and performer. When war broke out Baker volunteered as a spy for the French resistance. She told them, I am willing to give my life for France. You may make use of me as you see fit. Directly pro Amy Dowden shares fears over cancer surgery results as baby plans put on hold in the 1960s she became a leading light in the American civil rights movement. She stood next to Martin Luther King at his history-making march on Washington on August 28, 1963, a date she described as, the happiest day of my life. She even delivered the oration right before King's timeless I Have a Dream speech. When she died in 1975, her funeral at L'Eglise de la Madeleine in Paris was attended by more than 20,000 mourners. None of that would have seemed possible when the first chapter opened and she was born into a world of extreme poverty and discrimination in 1906. Frida Josephine McDonald was brought up by a single mother in St. Louis, Missouri. At eight years old she started work as a servant for white families in St. Louis. When once she accidentally poured too much soap into the laundry, the head of the household scorched her hands as a punishment. When she was 11, Baker looked on in horror as racists spurned down the homes of black residents. She later remembered, we children stood huddled together in bewilderment, frightened to death by the screams of the Negro families running across this bridge, with nothing but what they had on their backs. So with this vision, I ran and ran and ran. Ultimately all the way to Paris. Don't miss dot Amanda Holden shares pricey beauty regime as she boasts treatment could make her look 12, discover Alex Scott makes jaws drop as she shows off her toned body in skimpy black bikini, latest escape to the Chateau Stars plan UK tour after Channel 4 acts, insight, after noticing the talented 14-year-old entertaining cues with her dancing outside the Booker Washington Theatre in St. Louis, the director hired her on the spot. The young performer quickly made a name for herself in St. Louis and then New York, before being recruited by French producers to star at the Théâtre des Champs-Élysées in 1925 and the Folie Berge air the next year. Arriving in the French capital at 19, Baker finally felt free, recalling, I had been suffocating in the States. A lot of us left, not because we wanted to but because we couldn't stand it anymore. I felt liberated in Paris. Baker, who was now using her second husband's surname for her stage work, proved an instant sensation in France. All the most notable people of the time clamored to meet her. She was painted by Picasso and faded by Ernest Hemingway, Jean Cocteau, Man Ray, and Jean Gombe. She reportedly had affairs with Georges Simenon, Le Corbusier, Clara Smith, Ada Britop-Smith, 
Colette, and Frida Kahlo. The second chapter in Baker's life started with the outbreak of the war in 1939. Fired up by hatred of the Nazi ideology and having taken French nationality in 1937, she began to work secretly for the French resistance. She hid weapons and radios for them in the cellar at Milan. Touring throughout Europe and North Africa, she was able to send vital messages about the Nazis back to the resistance. Some were written in invisible ink on her sheet music and some were concealed in her underwear. Who would dare strip search Josephine Baker? She said. Her natural charisma was very useful in her clandestine work. As the book Jazz Cleopatra notes, she specialized in gatherings at embassies and ministries, charming people as she had always done, but at the same time trying to remember interesting items to transmit. As well as spying, she worked as a nurse for the Red Cross and as a pilot, burying much-needed supplies in her private plane. In 1961 she was given the highest accolade by the French state, the Legion of Honor, in recognition of her work for the Resistance. The medal is displayed at Le Chateau de Milan. The third chapter of her life focused on what she called her rainbow drive. From 1953 onwards she adopted 12 children from very different backgrounds. Driven by anti-racist idealism, she was eager to show that, children of different ethnicities and religions could be brothers. Milan, where Baker employed 120 people during the 1950s, became known as, the capital of brotherhood, the village of the world. But despite her phenomenal achievements, Baker was still not done with making history. The fourth chapter of her life commenced in the 1950s when she became a dedicated campaigner for the civil rights movement in the U.S. When she went to New York with her fourth husband, French composer Joe Bouillon, in the 1950s, they were turned away from 36 hotels which banned couples from different races. She rejected many lucrative offers to play for segregated audiences in the U.S. Baker was on the receiving end of death threats from the Ku Klux Klan, but asserted that they did not scare her. So when she came to give her rousing speech at the March on Washington, she was fueled by a righteous ire. Standing in front of the Lincoln Memorial, she was the only official female speaker. In an especially potent section of her speech, she said, I've walked into the palaces of kings and queens and the houses of presidents and much more. But I could not walk into a hotel in America and get a cup of coffee, and that made me mad. When King was assassinated in 1968, his widow Coretta Scott King asked Baker to take his place as the head of the civil rights movement. After reflecting for several days, Baker turned the offer down, reasoning her children were, too young to lose their mother. On April 8, 1975, Baker headlined a performance in Paris marking her half-century in show business. The sellout show had spectacular reviews, attracting such stars as Bassey, Sophia Loren, Mick Jagger, Diana Ross, and Liza Minnelli. Baker was discovered in a coma in her bedroom four days later, and died in hospital from a cerebral hemorrhage. There is now a place Josephine Baker in Montparnasse, Paris, and on November 30, 2021, a ceremony in her honor was held at the Pantheon. She became the first black woman to be memorialized at the iconic monument. As Hemingway so rightly put it, Baker was, the most sensational woman anyone ever saw. From June 23 to 25, 
a festival celebrating her life and times is being held at Milan. More details at Milan.com James stayed at Rochevois. Tom. Melting